So, thank you very much for coming back, and we'd like to move on to the second part of the agenda. Uh, and I'd like to welcome a double act in Gary Fay and Kevin Tibbs. Gary, Associate Director at Hudson, and Kevin Tibbs, Director at Validated Skills. And they will be talking about recruit and retain. So, gentlemen, thank you very much. So, ah, there we go. A double act. Uh, someone has suggested earlier that we were uh, an older version of Ant and Deck. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a small one. Uh, and we didn't even talk to each other about uniform, but we see, both seem to have come uh, the same dress. So, welcome everybody. Welcome back. I'll try to uh, not give us some feedback, but uh, Kevin and I are going to give you a presentation about recruit and retain. Um, we're going to present a new methodology that uh, Hudson and Validate Skills have developed which incorporates a traditional recruitment methodology, but it also incorporates a SOFIA assessment tool. Um, Sarah Greensmith earlier uh, alluded to the fact that 60% of, uh, of, of hiring managers now are talking about a bad hire. Um, we firmly believe that the long-term rewards of actually getting this particular model right will result in a better retention of our talent, and as we know, very important. Um, So you'll all be familiar with this particular model. Um, Hudson and Validate are, are using a, a very similar model, if not the same model, but we're now actually using it in a, in a recruitment methodology, which we believe is, is quite unique in the market at the moment, and we firmly believe in our business that this is actually going to be quite a game changer. Um, just a, 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 a nice slide which pretty much breaks down the, the, the areas in which we as recruiters try to validate and, and try to assess candidates based on. Um, Hudson 5 plus 1 model, and, and this is something that most organizations would use, is, is essentially a behavioral skills competency model. It enables us to, to profile candidates. It enables us to kind of think about uh, the behavioral skills of the right candidate for any particular job. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a great tool for us to necessarily use to, to kind of ensure that we're matching candidates up to the organization culturally. Knowledge, knowledge can, be, can be tested with candidates based on technical, technical testing. It's a, it's a reasonably easy thing that we can actually measure a candidate's, uh, candidate's suitability to a particular client on. Uh, but the one thing that we haven't been able to do after CV evaluation where I actually get involved and actually talk about the experience and the qualifications and suitability of a candidate to an organization, the one thing that we haven't been able to do to date is actually assess a candidate's suitability against a job in terms of professional skills. And, it, it, you know, Sophia exists, but for us as recruiters, to actually assess professional skills of a candidate at the early stages of recruitment has, has been a completely missing link for us. So I'm going to give you a case study, and a case study that, that Hudson uh, have recently been, uh, been running with the Foreign and Commonwealth Office. So if I call it the FCO, it's the, the Foreign and Commonwealth Office. Um, I've, I've called it going above and beyond, but essentially the FCO had been to market uh, three times to fill one particular role. Uh, unsuccessfully, not done anything particularly wrong. The agency that they were working with or the agencies they'd worked with hadn't done anything particularly, uh, particularly wrong. But they still hadn't actually found the ideal candidate for that particular role. Um, after some, some years of relationship, they asked me to go in and, and pretty much have a chat with them and just kind of try to work out exactly what was going wrong. Why weren't they actually filling this particular post? I think what we did initially, we actually went in and, and consulted with, uh, with the FCO and we actually said to them, listen, let, let's just have a quick look at the job specification. What, what is it that we're actually looking for here? And the, the title of the post was, was Live Service Delivery Manager, ITIL Qualifications, pretty standardized stuff. They've been to market three times. It's... You know, it's a long process, a retained project can take three months, you know, we could be talking potentially nine months worth of, of a sticking point here. And essentially the, the problem was they still weren't actually finding the missing link. What was it that they weren't quite getting right at the interview stage? Well, we actually helped them, we, we broke the job back down into its core components. We actually really sat with them, we sat with a Sophia consultant and validate skills, and we actually helped them break the job down into its core skills components. And we actually started to understand what the professional skill requirement would be as opposed to just the, the behavioral competences or the technical skill set, or at least the experience and the qualifications, which are the things that we can always do, but it was a professional skills bit that was missing. So using this FEAR framework, we broke the role down into four key professional skills, and I'll go into a bit more detail in a couple of moments. We helped the supplier understand what those four key components were, 
And once we understood them as recruiters, we could start embedding those key components into the candidate application documents. We could embed them into the application forms, the candidate briefing information. So we were starting to talk to candidates about professional skills and not just you must have 10 years experience in and you must be ITIL qualified in. We were actually talking about what the job would be doing. The Hudson approach, so essentially we've developed a methodology which pretty much now talks about breaking down the job into its core components and actually what, what we do with that information. And now we actually understand what the professional skills of a job actually looks like. What can we actually do with that information? Well, in this case, the... So in this case, as I alluded to earlier, this is called a D7 Live Service Delivery Manager role. Pretty standard. You guys will all have a similar role in your organizations. It's not unique. Um, it's something that we'll all recognize one way or another. Um, but the unique approach to this particular assignment and the unique approach in which now Hudson are taking this methodology to market is, is, is in my mind, the difference. Um, what made the, the role a, a different in this particular um, situation? So in collaboration, as I say, with the client, we've determined the particular professional skills of that job. We've basically sat down and mapped the job against the SAFRIA framework. We've enhanced the selection data gathering from the interview process, so I can actually start talking to candidates and actually start pulling out the relevant information about their professional skills, which is actually really valuable information. And it actually helps the candidate understand what the requirements of the job would actually be. Um, it allows us to provide feedback as to which candidates demonstrate the particular skill sets and the experiences that we're looking for. So in this case, as you can see, we actually mapped four key codes relevant to the job. Um, nothing groundbreaking there, nothing kind of that you wouldn't expect to see in a standard life service delivery type post, service level management, service acceptance, stakeholder relationship management and readiness and deploy deployment. But we can actually start pulling these codes into both the application form, so we're talking about professional skills in the application form, and we can bring it into the candidate briefing document. So all of a sudden, the whole term, the whole uh, recruitment piece is actually now talking about professional skills rather than experiences. So the methodology, guys I'm sure you're all familiar with, you, you will have hired or been through the hiring process, was pretty standardized from a Hudson perspective. It's, it's go-to-market, it's headhunting, which Sarah talked about earlier, it's, it's the networking, it's the standard recruitment methodology that you would all hope, hope to uh, expect to see. We even developed the, the, the application forms, as I say, now talking about the professional skills but what we're actually now starting to do, we're actually starting to, to now think about the professional skills in our assessment of the candidates. So whereas I would actually do the professional skills assessment, but just before that, the, prof the personality profiling, so I'm doing a, a personality profiling, so I'm doing a, a psychometric on the candidate. I'm doing some technical, some technical testing, so we're essentially proving the person can do the job. But now we're actually starting to worry about the professional skills, and we're talking about the professional skills but how do we test the candidate against those professional skills? Someone was talking earlier in one of the other presentations about validation. How do we validate whether that person has that particular skill set? And this isn't self-validation. We're actually now developing a tool that can validate the person's particular ability to perform that professional skill. Um, not only can they perform that professional skill, but we're now understanding the level of the role as well. So they may be able to perform something similar, but can they perform the level of that particular skill at the level required? In this case, it was a level six, so we're finding very good candidates of four and five, level four, maybe level five, who potentially could aspire to do that job, but we're actually now starting to qualify people at a level six who could do those particular skill sets. I'm going to pass you over to Kevin now, because when I talk about validation, essentially Kevin's tool and, and in partnership with Hudson, this is where we've essentially now mapped out the right candidate, and I've given him a long list of candidates who I deem to be appropriate, and I've asked Kevin then to essentially produce a methodology which will validate that person's ability to do that particular post. Thanks, Kev. Right, good morning, everyone. Um, I guess it's my job to tell you now is how, how we do that. Uh, Gary's giving you the story of the client, how we put together the codes by uh, bringing in the consultant, working through the job description. Um, before we get on to the how, I need to tell you about the team to build that credibility um, my team, some of them are actually sat amongst you, um, qualified authors uh, of exams, uh, members, long-standing uh, IT experience uh, consultants, some uh, Sophia consultants themselves. So we do have uh, a wealth of experience in the background, um, and our team of authors have pulled together a question bank from um, pulling together each of the codes from the descriptors of the Sophia framework. 
we built a number of um, question banks at each level and at each code. So we can then, as Gary mentioned, when we've pulled four codes into a particular client, we can then bring those question banks together in one particular test, one assessment. Um, you'll see by the slide, we can actually weight the, the actual codes according to the job description. So if, if one role was more critical on one code, we can actually add more questions accordingly. This is a, a typical uh, question, um, points if you can actually answer this question correctly. Um, we do have multiple uh, templates. We don't just use the um, multiple questions uh, or multiple choice. We have others, uh, drag and drops, hotspots, all the other things that you, you would have within a, an exam system. So what we've done now is we've pulled together the assessment, we pulled in the codes, we've got the question banks ready to sit in one test. We present that to the clients, um, the candidates, depending on the client situation, whether they don't, that, that needs to be controlled in examination conditions or whether it can be sat at home, depending on how confident the client uh, feels. We manage the candidates, give them support if needed, and, and therefore, once the candidates have sat the test, we work um, on the analysis of the results. This particular slide shows you uh, indicators per code. We can tell how well the candidate carried, um, how well the candidate did within the codes themselves. This particular candidate you'll see, uh, I've deliberately left the gap there, you'll see at level six evaluator. We do have level six, uh, or, or should I say we have evaluator questions to make sure that those candidates are answering questions that are, and they're operating at that particular level. And we have weighted those questions. So this client, um, this candidate actually didn't answer the correct, or should I say most appropriate answer within the question banks. But you'll see that their weighted uh, pass rate was 55%. So they actually got within or thereabouts the, the, the answers that we needed. So they're not totally flunked on the evaluation of that level. They're just not answering that correct question. Um, moving on, what we've done uh, we were actually um, went to the existing position, the, the, the individuals that were operating that role, and we tested those individuals so we could have a benchmark. And that benchmark we allocated around 50%. Um, we worked through the role evaluators to make sure that we were pitching at the right levels. Um, we soon got an indicator that uh, the candidates coming through were a little below par in terms of the levels but we needed to weight that accordingly. So what we're able to do, as I said in the assessment build, is to look at particular critical codes that are pertinent to that role. In this instance, SLMO was, was seen to be the, the most critical at 45%. This was um, put together in terms of our discussions with the client through the uh, Sophia consultant. So we're able to discuss, it's not all on black and white systems, we do have interview and, and discussions at the front end to make sure that we're looking at critical areas of the recruiting. Pulling all the results together, all the uh, weighted uh, answers and the actual code questions, we could soon see that um, a number of candidates were coming up um, with a very high level of, of, of competence within the particular codes, codes that we were looking for and those codes that were critical to the role. Um, and you'll see that candidate L, K, J, and so on were all coming up um, quite close in terms of what we were looking for. Our last element, um, basically uh, what we call a, a traffic light system, quite simply pulling all of the results together, we can see by percentages who were the good performers and who were, um, let's say, considered performance. Um, again, LKJ, I, um, sorry, LK and, and so on, 90%, 86%, all looking very good. And this, this gave us a short list to then call in for interview. Um, and it certainly gave us a, a list of candidates that could be put on standby if, if those first were not seen through the next interview stage. Um, I'll just hand back to Gary to do a wrap-up, okay? Thanks, Gary.
So if I go back to our earlier slide where we were looking at professional skills, knowledge, behavioural skills and experience and qualifications, which are probably the four key components in which we as recruiters like to assess candidates based on. Hudson 5 plus 1 model, which is the personality profile and psychometrics, it's the competency-based interview designs that we can all do, which actually measures the candidate's suitability and behavioural skills and match up to the organisation or the, or the opportunity. The technical screening, which there's a whole host of different uh, organisations which, which uh, provide di different technical tests, be it Java testing or be it project management testing, but you know, to actually technically test someone is, is reasonably easy to do. CV evaluation, well, I'm still part of the whole process and uh, good old recruitment is still here, thankfully, and long, long, long may it stay, but I'm still needed to, to actually sit with the candidate and us to have that kind of formal meeting and, and discuss the opportunity and make sure that really the engagement piece is here and for me to really challenge the person's experience and qualifications. But finally, the missing link, the validate skills bit, the bit that Kevin has just essentially uh, presented to us. This is the professional skills um, assessment testing that we can now actually wrap into our recruitment process. This now actually gives us four key components in which we can assess any candidate's suitability against the job. Uh, now, candidates still go through the interview process, but we're just using all of this information as additional indicators. We're actually giving the client now, not only the candidate who will come to the interview and actually sit with your standardised interview process, but we're really giving tangible evidence now as to why that candidate is actually suitable to a particular position. I think without all four pieces, there is always going to be a missing link, but with all four pieces together, I think now you have a complete recruitment life cycle there that actually produces the right candidate for the right role. So in, in summing up, essentially the, the, the methodology in which Hudson and Validate are, are, are now using, and we're using this day to day, and, and we, we, you know, we, we're using this in, in several different projects with several different organisations in both the public and the private sector, so it, it, it's, a, it's a tool for all. Um, we think that we've got a robust screening process. Um, I think this is not only finding the right candidate, but importantly, and, and you know, th there is a retain bit in, my, in, the, in the title of, uh, of my, uh, my presentation, but I think if we're starting to, to make IT managers think about professional skills, they're starting to consider professional skills within their departments, they're starting to think about learning and development, they're starting to think about assessment within their own departments. They're actually thinking about now putting Sophia into the organisation without the whole big piece. And all of a sudden, even the, the users, the stakeholders, are actually considering um, Sophia and using Sophia without it coming from somewhere else in the business. Um, I, I, I think with the method that we're choosing, the, the, the receptiveness of, of, of the, the line managers is, is so much easier because actually all we're doing is giving them another tool to assess the candidate suitability for them. Um, I think if we get all of that right, we get the person's ability right to actually do the role, it means that they're the right person for the job, that immediately has an impact on the retention of that person staying in the organisation. I think getting organisations to think about the professional skills it has a direct correlation to the retainment of that person in the organisation. And hopefully, Ron, in a year's time that we can come back to you and show a year's worth of data to suggest that actually all of this good stuff is actually proven to be successful. It's retaining all of the good people we're hiring under this particular methodology. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I think we've got time just for a couple of questions. If there are any questions on this, this particular topic. No questions. I, I will be particularly interested in how that pans out as to how that translated through to actually shortening the time to, to identify the right candidate. So I'm looking forward to what you say next year. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Sir. Thank you. Um, I just I picked out a couple of things because I'm, I'm starting to detect a theme from a, a couple of our presenters this morning. Again, we saw this breaking down of Sophia into four skills that were used uh, to identify for a particular role. So I think this is, Sophia is amazingly rich and its strength is being able to take elements of that to make it more manageable, more usable, and actually get a sense tech on some of those things. And I think we started to touch on self-assessment. So I'll be interested to see where this goes because everyone will be interested in how we move people to self-assessment and what tools can we provide them with to actually make our own certainty of some of that assessment stick. <laughs>